I've been listening to the four talks, mashallah, and the very learned scholars that have been speaking. And uh, I really don't know if I have anything to add. But alhamdulillah, my job is to summarize and pull it all together. Uh, uh, before I talk about these four women, I'd like to talk about uh, women in the Quran in general. The purpose of all of this is for us to go back with a different idea of who we are, what our role is, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, perceives us, and, and what our responsibility is. In general, if you speak, if you go through the Quran in general, and uh, there are so many ayahs that uh, mention women or deal with women, um, the one that having studied Milton, having done my BA here and all of this, uh, the one that really stands out first, the ones that really stand out first, are the ones that correct misconceptions. In Islam, woman was not the cause of the fall of man. Uh, in Islam, we have uh, the uh, the dual, uh, uh, I don't know what they call it in English, you know, instead of singular or plural, we have uh, al-muthanna. And uh, in, the, in the Quran, over and over and over again, it is repeated, فَأَزَلَّهُمَا الشَّيْطَانِ فَأَخْرَجَهُمَا مِمَّا كَانَا فِيهِ فَأَكَلَا مِنْهَا That the two made the mistake, the two were... Uh, 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 deceived by uh, shaitan, the two fell, and uh, uh, and then Subhanallah. The lesson is that you can make a mistake and then and then turn to Allah in repentance. For the the correcting of misconceptions that there is no such thing as women being the cause of the fall of man. The other thing is uh, the ayah that uh, uh, one of our speakers mentioned, وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُكَ الْأُنْثَى When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an, uh, when she's almost apologizing, uh, the mother of Sayyidina Maryam, when she gives birth to a, a woman and she says, uh, verily, uh, uh, men are not like women or, or males are not like females. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us all of humanity forever and ever. The, the most amazing lesson, the, the one example of the four women that we have, the one example that will never be repeated. Uh, Sheikh Sha'rawi has an interesting uh, take on this. He says, uh, uh, why is it that the wife of uh, um, Fir'aun is not mentioned by name? And uh, uh, the other and the other two uh, wives of the prophets are not men mentioned by name because they're a generic uh, uh, template, let's say, that that can be repeated. But Sayyidina Maryam bint Amran is mentioned fully by name because this is the one miracle that will never be repeated again. So she becomes someone that in, in history that will, that the, 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 she, she has the, the miracle happen to her that will never ever be repeated. This is an answer to وَلَيْسَ ذَكَرُكَ الْأُنْثَى the other thing is, uh, if you read the Quran, you have the ayahs that show you that we're equal in value and equal in reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ أَنِّي لَا أُضِيعُ عَمَلَ عَامِلٍ مِنْكُمْ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى That Allah says, I will not waste the, 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 the work of any of you, be he male or female. So equal, equal pay for equal work. You, the, the, you get, in fact... We keep getting reward when we're not praying because we're told not to pray then. And uh, even though we're not doing anything, we're just by, by, by obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, uh, and in another place, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى He who does good deeds, be he male or female, and that person is a believer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we will have him live uh, a good life here. And... Uh, 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward them uh, in, in the best of what they used to do. But here, equal, you know, equal in getting reward for anything that you do, be you male or female. Then there's other ayahs that say, that emphasize equal but not identical. Uh, some some uh, scholars of tafsir uh, refer to, Bismillah uh, ar-Rahim, وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَى وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا تَجَلَّى وَمَا خَلَقَ الذَّكَرَ وَالْأُنْثَى إِنَّ سَعَيَكُمْ لَشَدَّهُ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, uh, talking about the night and then talking about the day 
and then talking about creating male and female and saying, verily, your, your paths are varied or different. Or uh, There are certain scholars that say, just like the night and day complement one another to perform the 24 hours, so do males and females complement one another to form the human society. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here, so not to feel uncomfortable. I grew up hundreds of years ago when, uh, when women were trying to prove I can do anything, you can do better. You know, that we wanted women, the women movement was, even if it's uncomfortable for you, even if it's something you're not interested in, even if you don't like whatever it is, do it just to prove that you are just as good. I grew up in an era when a very famous uh, um, newscaster said, uh, uh, I had to do the work of three men to be, able, to be accepted as equal to one man. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is relieving us of this. We don't need to prove ourselves to anyone. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says I'm equal, then this is, this is all I need. I don't need someone in society to give me their stamp of approval. Uh, the other ayahs that were revealed, subhanAllah, we have the ayah of, uh, uh, in, in the Arabic language, if you have uh, a group of women and only one man, you use the masculine. This is the Arabic gram grammar. And if you have, and if you use the female, that means you mean, you mean women exclusively. So everything in the Quran, unless it specifically says men, anything in the Quran when it says an nas, when it says mu'mineen, when it says is, is addressing men and women. And everybody knows this. But Umm Salama went to the Prophet, peace and be upon him, and said, how come in the Quran it's all mentioning men? And she wasn't saying it with, with the ugly attitude of, you know, how come we don't get mentioned as, as men are mentioned. She was saying it, with, with, you know, I, with, with concern. Is, is, there some, is there a reason why we are not mentioned as often and that we are going to be, have less reward or less... And she was concerned. And subhanAllah, she said, one day I was combing my hair at home and I heard the, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, on the mimbar reciting an ayah. And I quickly covered my head and I went to the farthest place of my, of my room, of my home, so I could hear what he was saying and he was reciting... إِنَّ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ وَالْقَانِتِينَ وَالْقَانِتَاتِ وَالصَّادِقِينَ وَالصَّادِقِينَ A long ayah mentioning male and female, male and female, in Surah Al-Ahzab, that was revealed for the sake of a woman, just to give women this, this, uh, this uh, feeling inside. Subhanallah, uh, then we have the role models, and that's... Amazing. Those, these are the four women that we're talking about now. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points out to humanity, uh, these, the, the, these are, are models for you to, that I'm pleased with, for you to follow. So what is it about them? That, what is it that they all have in common, having heard so much about each one of these four? SubhanAllah, I always, when I need to speak about women in Islam, what always occurs to me is, Confidence and serenity. And today, after the four talks, I'm going to add focus. Confidence, because you don't need, you, 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 are give, you, you realize who you are in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you realize what your role is. And you realize that you have a choice in everything that you're doing. And the akhirah is so vivid in your eyes that you, nothing can strip you of the, 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 the confidence that you have in, in your heart that, that you matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then there's the serenity, where I don't have to prove myself to anyone. And I don't care what people may say. I know, with a calmness within me, when I read the Quran, subhanAllah Sha'rawi, I mention him again, he would say that if, uh, if it were not for the arrogance of men, when they read the Qur'an, they would realize that the Qur'an is not only uh, uh, fair to women, but biased towards women. But they're so, he would say this, they're so arrogant and vain, they don't even pick up on it. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fair and just. Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a little extra more? Because society is always giving us an extra, a little extra less to, 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 to balance things. So subhanAllah, these, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the serenity is that I know who I am in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hello. Listening to these four talks today, I want to say also women in Islam is focused. You are focused on your first and foremost and the, the most important role that you have in life, which is servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the other roles are passing in your life. You're a daughter, you're a wife, you're a, a mother, you're, you're uh, neither a wife nor a mother, you're a scholar, you're whatever passing role that you go through in life, the one constant role that you will need to stay focused on in order for you to be constantly um, uh, 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 serene in your heart is the role of servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost. And this is, I think, what is so apparent in, in their lives. And it's interesting to, to, to look at these four women and, and realize that one of them was not married. One of them was uh, uh, married to a tyrant. One of them was married three times, widowed twice, and then married to a prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa And one of them was married to a good man. You've covered all the different types of yani, status that, you, that a woman can, can, can have. One of them was a mother, the, the biological uh, 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 the, the, the result of a, of a normal marriage, but she wasn't married. Imagine what a test that was. One of them was a, a mother, raised a child that was not her chi biological child, and she could not have children. And two had, uh, Sayyidah Khadija had three and then six. Sayyidah Khadija had nine children, and Sayyidah Fatima had uh, three boys. One of her ch boys, uh, Dam Muhassin, died young, and, uh, and four, four children that, that survived. Uh, we have a, a, one woman who couldn't have any children, the rest uh, two who, who could, one who was not married. And you think about it, you can't, because shaitan comes to you and says, you know, if only I, was, I were married, I would be a completely different person. I would be able, you know, I would, I would my, fulfill the, the second half of, one half of my deen. I would be so focused on what's right. It's so difficult being single. If only I were not married. I would have so much more time to focus on memorization of Quran. I wouldn't have all these distractions. And if only I had, a, my husband was, was a good Muslim. If only he were a practicing Muslim. It just, it just fills my heart with anger. And I have a grudge in my heart against life and sometimes religion because of the way he acts. If only he were a good person, I would be a completely, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has these four women four different types for us to, for us to follow. Uh, the hardship that they went through, the difficult life that you would imagine that, Ya Allah, I remember when I first went on Hajj. I went on Hajj, telling you, you don't believe me when I tell you hundreds of years ago. When I went on Hajj, I was very young. I was like 22 years old. And then, yeah, imagine, they didn't have... We had never seen the Kaaba. There were no pictures of the, you know, there were, there were photographs, but you never saw the, the, the Kaaba live. Yani. You had no idea what, what you, were, you were going to see. So I was going there, yani, I had never seen it, and uh, uh, I had seen, maybe even photographs were not allowed then, I don't even remember. And uh, it was supposed to be something amazing. And in my, in my imagination, I was going to become that the trip of Hajj was going to be something like, I was going to be something close to the angels. You know, I just imagined I would be doing tawaf and, 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 and sa'i and, and, and prayer and fasting and close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it was going to be the most spiritual, amazing trip I ever had in my life. And then I discovered you still had to eat. And you still had to find a place to make wudu. And you still got tired. And it was each one of these, you know, hit me like, I can't tell you. I mean, now it sounds silly, but I'm telling you, I was young and uh, totally unprepared. And we had no, we, 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 we left from the States and we had, we were supposed to be with a group of people and 
they, 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 they didn't exist. We got to the airport in, in Jeddah and they said, there's no such thing. And so we were on our own. And here I am with my husband who had gone on Hajj before with his sheikh though. So he knew nothing. And I had this, so I had this fiqh book and you know, I would be reading and say, now we, now we put down our, our, what are they called, the, the, the sleeping bag. Now we put down the sleeping bag here in Mazdalifah and we're supposed to sleep. And he would say, okay. And we'd lie down. And then I say, now we go to Mina and we have to stay there more than half the night. It says, wait a minute. And this is what I was doing. And we walked and we walked. I can't tell you how much we walked in during this Hajj. And each one, you know, I was so unprepared. I had no idea each one of these things. And then subhanAllah, I remember one day we got in, in, uh, in a, a car and we asked, the, no, it was the first time we got in the car from the airport to Mecca. Where I'm going to enter now. And I, there's so many doors. And, I'm, and I know there's a dua that you're supposed to make dua when you first see the Kaaba. And it's supposed to be answered. And I want to know which is the best door to go down from. So I ask the driver and I say, which is the best door to enter the haram from? He said, I don't know. <laughs> and we said, what do you mean you don't know? He said, I've been here for 20 years and I've never been inside the haram once. That's it. That's a completely different story, but I'm telling you, yani, subhanAllah. And that man came back to my mind, and I said to myself, subhanAllah, just like the Kaaba is there, but you can get distracted by the fact that we had no apartment to stay in. And, we, you know, three days would pass, and I'd say to my husband, when was the last time we ate? And it would be like three days ago. We were just drinking soda and whatever just to stay alive and totally unaware because we're trying to keep up. And, and uh, just like worldly matters cropped up in Hajj and there's the Kaaba ready for anybody to do tawaf and say and, and sit there and, and pray but we can get distracted by Sayyidina I said subhanAllah so is the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives and we are constantly saying to ourselves until I finish just when I gra until I graduate no I'll start focusing more after I get married I'm engaged now. I'll start focusing more once the baby is older, once the baby is weaned, once the children go to school, once the children graduate, once the... And subhanAllah, it's, I felt that Hajj was all about bringing this all together, you know, stay focused. And this is what these women had. They're focused with all the hardship that they went through. And it wasn't some fantasy life that they lived. Sayyidah Maryam... In our heads, we think, oh, Ya Allah, all she did was, you know, st sit there and, 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 and uh, uh, do ibadah and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, but then what happened afterwards? She had a baby, and she had to go to her people, and she had to face them. And can you imagine what a difficult, of, of, of all people, yani, uh, what a difficult trial that would have been for someone like her? But each one of them had a trial. And uh, uh, Sayyidi Asya with, uh, with her husband Fir'aun. And uh, uh, Sayyidi Khadija, subhanAllah, here's a woman in her 60s climbing up the mountain, this difficult, difficult mountain, to bring her husband uh, 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 food because she's figured out that he must have run out of what he, what he took with him to, to start with. Here's a wife who had a list, I don't know if you mentioned this, who had a list of all these good qualities in the back of her mind. Un, unlike so many of us wives who have a list of all the shortcomings and the hardships and the difficulties and the awful things that you've done to me and at any point I can pull it out and, and, and start you know, mentioning. You know, the, she had in mind ready a list of all his best qualities to immediately face him with the second he came to her, telling her he was frightened and and. For uh, Subhanallah, Sayyidah Khadija, the difficult life that she that she had, and the, when she was in the siege for three years, and this was the cause of her her death in the end, and uh, and being there, taking care of the family, and I always feel Subhanallah that the house that say uh, 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 Sayyidina Jibril uh, uh, mentioned to her is a hollow pearl in, uh, uh, in, in, in uh, uh, heaven wherein there is no noise uh, uh, or, 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 uh, or discord. Which means, and it, you stop and you think about it, she was left at home with the children and, and, uh, and there was Sayyidina Zayd and there was Sayyidina Ali and there were all of these people that she was taking care of. It must have been difficult for her. And Sayyidina Fatima, Sayyidina Fatima, five children within a very short period of time. 
young little children and very very humble means and uh, and she said she she came to the prophet peace and blessing be upon him because the the uh, what is it called the gr you grind the what you grind with the two pieces of of stone that you grind wheat with had 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 left blisters on her hand that were so bad that her husband told her your father has now people servants that he can help you with go to him and ask him for one and she goes to him and she asks him for one and he tells her i'll tell you something better than that and he gives her the the recipe that uh, Hala was mentioned the 33 33 34 the subhanallah alhamdulillah allahu akbar before you sleep so no one relieved them of the difficulty that they were going through. They didn't have, you know, we're always thinking of what's the way out? What's the solution? What's, what can we do to, uh, and subhanAllah, sometimes it's qadar. Sometimes there are certain things, there is no good solution. The best solution is sabr. And like I'm always telling people, subhanAllah, so, sabr is mentioned so many times in the Quran. So many times in the Quran is uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Almost, you almost feel like it is a condition of entering Jannah. For you to go through something that you bear with sabr. It is like, sabr is like the key that you have in order to enter Jannah. How can you possibly have owned this key unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts you through something that is difficult and hard for you. Say, if only, it was, if only I had that hardship, I would have you know, survived, or that particular hardship I could have handled. Or, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it's not a hardship for you. It has to be custom tailored to be incredibly difficult for you, for you to be able to really exercise what sabr is all about, for you to be able to have this key that's going to help you enter, enter Jannah. So if we think about the, 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 these four women and what they, how focused they were on their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did uh, our speaker say about Sayyidina Maryam? Her immediate reaction was, I, I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Immediately, it's always, it's always about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to them. What did Sayyidina Asya say? Rabbi ibn li indaka baytan fil jannah. I, oh, Allah, build a home for me with you in jannah, close to you in jannah. Immediately, you know, the, 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 the inner conversation that they, they always have, always focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did Sayyidah Khadija say? They say, of all the people in the world, all the eloquent speakers in the world, no one could match Sayyidah Khadija when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent her his salams. What do you say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Angel Jibreel is coming to you saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending you salam. And what do you say? Wa alayhi salam? What, 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 how, how do you respond to something like this? And, and scholars talk, yani write pages and pages and pages about the eloquence of what she said. Allahu salam. Allah is peace. Wa minhu salam. And peace comes from him. Wa ala Jibreel salam. She didn't choose to say what your normal, you know. Somebody says salam, gives you their salam. Wa alaykum salam. She didn't do that. She, she realized who she's, who she's addressing. Allahu wa salam, wa minhu salam, wa ala Jibreel salam. For the, 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 the focus, the immediate focus, knowing what to say, how to say it. Sayyidah Fatima, on her deathbed, she got sick. And she, there was someone called Um Salma who was nursing her. And uh, she said, one day, Um Salma says, one day she woke up feel, looking and seeming better than before. And uh, she said to me, oh, my mother, bring me water so I can take a bath. And she said she took the best ghusl I have ever seen her take. And then she said, oh, my mother, bring me my new clothes. And she put on her new clothes. And then she said, pull my bed into the middle of the house. And she pulled it into the middle of the house so that it was facing the qibla. And she lay on her right side. She put her hand under her cheek and she was facing the qibla. And she said, I'm dying. Once I'm dead, don't have anyone come and uncover me and wash me. I have just done that. But this is one of the narrations of the, the death of Sayyidi Fatima. Who of us would approach death with such calmness and, and certainty 
of 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 where they are going and 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 who they are returning to. Only people with focus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us focus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who see the first and foremost and most important role in their life is their role of servitude, abdulillah, servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May all the other distractions, uh, uh, a nice husband, a difficult husband, uh, good children, no children, uh, uh, grown children, young children, uh, 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 lack of means. Oh, I didn't talk about status. Uh, 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 think for a minute about the status they had. Sayyidi uh, Maryam had spiritual status. Uh, Sayyidi uh, 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 Asya had dunya status. She was the wife of the most important person. And then later on, she, she transcended that to go to spiritual status. Uh, uh, Sayyidi Khadija had wealth. She had dunya. The other one had position. Asya had position. Uh, 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 Sayyidah Khadija had wealth. Uh, she was also important in her, in her, in her community, but not the, the, the wife of the most important person. And then she became the wife, a, a widow, a widow, and then the wife of a prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidah uh, uh, Fatima, married to a very good man, the, the daughter of a prophet. Then look at how subhanAllah Allah gave them, one of them the mother of a prophet, one of them the wife of a prophet, one of them the daughter of a prophet. But one, no. So, if you, so you won't say, well, what about, you know, I'm not related to any prophet, so this is why they're, they're in better shape than I am. Think about the, the focus that they had, whether we have money, or not. Sayyidah Fatima didn't have any wealth. Sayyidah Khadija did. Whether I, whether I have status that is recognized in society or not. Sayyidah Maryam went from such high status in her community and then to below the, 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 the worst status when she came to them carrying a baby. Whatever your status, whatever people think of you, Whatever your means, whatever, however difficult or easy your life is, whatever the circumstances that you have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us in these four women their ability to focus. If you have, if you can focus on your Fatiha, in your prayers five times a day, if you can think of each, each phrase, each ayah that you're saying in the Fatiha, if you have a time at night that you wake up and you're all alone, and you're praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have a time after each prayer, yeah, look at how many choices you have. After each prayer, when you can focus and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have a time in the morning and the time at night, even if just 10 minutes of, of, of focusing on your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be the, the happiest person ever. Happy as in how? The person that has doesn't feel the strife, realizes it's there, but realizes it's a part of life and it's there for a reason. And alhamdulillah, and look and sees all the blessings within the strife. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you of those who see al-yusr with each asr. Inna ma'al usr yusra, inna ma'al usr yusra. Asr, al-usr, because it has al tarif is one particular, one specific asr. And it's sandwiched between two yusrs. Inna ma'al usr yusra, inna ma'al usr yusra. But in every difficulty and hardship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us through, there is so much, there are so many blessings that we need to be aware of. And this is how these women stayed focused. They were aware of the most important thing, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the ability to believe this is a blessing. Would we? Who knows? Sometimes start, stop and think about if If you were a person that had never heard about Islam, would you be, would you choose Islam if it was not presented to you in the, in the correct manner? How, how blessed are we that alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, we have belief? How blessed are we that we have the Quran? How blessed are we that we have these four role models to, to, to look up to? But this is something incredibly important, the idea of focus, the idea of serenity, the idea of realizing that no matter what it is that a person goes through, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not distract us by pettiness. All of these, 
all of, all of the things that are happening to you in life are there for a reason, to see how determined you are to remain focused on the most important role that you have. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make these people ro true role models for us. May we learn from them and be gain some of the rida that they gained from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May we be able to, within our circumstances, do the best we can to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah.